Today's video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion. This is Mike. This is Alec. And you're watching Reptiliatus. Friends, today is a funny time because, well, no, it's not funny. <laughs> Today. <laughs> it's hilarious. Today is an interesting episode on the channel. We are doing the ultimate reptile keepers road trip slash animal pickup mission. Reptile know. extravaganza. Yeah. And Alec is here for plants. <laughs> Got a couple plants. He loves the plants, as you may or may not know from the expo videos. And then a little phylodendron. Just says Borja Ridge or Borja Ridge. And it's very small, so I can keep it in the small cages. Vivarium kind. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that distinction was unnecessary. <laughs> Mike, what are we picking up today? Uh, well, I'm picking up an uh, onslaught of... <laughs> I'm picking up an army of Cruzio Hylocraspidopus. Picking up five of them. You guys can check it out on my channel, maybe. <laughs> well, I'll put the link for that video up above. Yeah. And, uh... Also, there's four tadpoles with that as well, so. Yes, so we'll get to this further down the road, but very exciting. There is actually a Canadian hobbyist who has been able to successfully reproduce these frogs. They're very rare and uncommon, so it's really cool. She's offering them. We took advantage. We're planning a road trip. And I, for the maybe not first time, you could say have been peer pressured or convinced to also partake in acquiring some of these animals in the form of tadpoles. So yes, I am also getting some of these. And then we're also going to be picking up another leaf turtle. I don't know how the heck it happened, but I was lucky enough to source another male so that ET can take a break, if you know what I mean. <laughs> With those three females. So yeah, it's gonna give me a nice arsenal of leaf turtles. We're gonna have two males and three females. It's gonna be sweet. So I'm gonna stop blabbing. Let's get on the road and head out to go pick up and see these amazing animals. As soon as we arrived at Savannah and Adam's place, Savannah enthusiastically toured us around her home to show us the various species of reptile and amphibians they're keeping. I was blown away by their high standard of care as well as the creativity behind each of their setups. Most of the enclosures incorporated some level of bioactivity and housed animals that were thriving. My favorite had to be this large room housing a breeding group of redfoot tortoises and a pair of Central American turtles. It was spacious, contained a body of water, and even had a heated shelter attached to the side of the structure. Oh, those are actually males, so they're gonna try to come us. Yeah, they're gonna, have you heard? Yeah, they're like, oh, look at chicken. Tortoises are incredibly curious animals, and I had the pleasure of following these three around the basement while Mike made his way into their enclosure exploring for unknown reasons. We would soon find out that he was trying to locate one of the two Central American wood turtles and luckily did end up finding one, so let's have a closer look now. But not before putting away the tortoises. And they actually like will hunt things. They're so smart. They're like, nah, they'll talk to the tortoises. Like it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I took a bunch of videos of it. Like the smartest reptiles. What? Incredible. This is tugboat, I think. And you have the one for these? There's two of them. Oh, cool. a pair. Have they bred for you? No, not yet. They're just sort of becoming adults, I think. Savannah showed us a very unique setup housing a few of their monkey-tailed skinks. I had never seen an enclosure housing these animals that had a water feature in the bottom, but she explained that the animals were doing really well. And interesting enough, she also expressed that they had documented the animals trying to hunt some of the fish in the water section of the enclosure, which suggests that the animals may not be as completely herbivorous as previously thought. Really interesting stuff that definitely needs some further documentation and study. It was pretty awesome to have the opportunity to meet all these beautiful animals and see how Savannah and Adam are keeping their reptiles. It was really inspiring and I really appreciate her openness and hospitality. Thank you. Hi, buddy. 
Now, before we take the time to hear Savannah's experience breeding the incredible Cruzio Hyla Craspidopus, I'd like to take a moment to sincerely thank today's video sponsor, Curiosity Stream. If you enjoy learning about animals, plants, topics of conservation, odds are you do love those things because you're watching this video, then Curiosity Stream is definitely the platform for you. They have incredible documentaries such as Wildest Islands, where in one episode you learn about how water monitors are a top predator on some of the Philippine islands. It was quite the interesting episode and taught me a lot about the variability in water monitors' diets. In another really interesting show, Ocean Mysteries with Jeff Corwin, you learn about conservation issues, amphibians, frogs, and in this episode in particular, we learned about the prehistoric tuatara and what the New Zealand government is doing to protect this species. It was an incredibly fascinating episode. The best part is, you can stream to any device at any time, anywhere. Curiosity Stream really does have something for everyone, including 35 collections handpicked by experts, including some award-winning exclusives and originals. Curiosity Stream is the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, and the Disney Plus for the scientists in all of us. And right now, I'm thrilled to share that they have a special offer for you. If you sign up right now using the code REPTILIATUS, you'll get a whole year of Curiosity Stream for just $14.99. Link in the description for more information. Thank you so much to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today's video. All right, everybody, we are at Savannah and Adam's place and they've been very generous with their time and very open with us about a very exciting project that sort of stumbled into play with them. And I'm gonna explain a little bit further here. This tank houses a beautiful tree frog known as the fringe leaf frog or Cruziohyla craspidopus. This is a frog endemic to Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia, and a few other countries in South America and very uncommon in the hobby as I mentioned before. However, they were able to produce these animals and At least that Mike and I are aware of. Before COVID started, like, or it was the January that it started, I guess. We like saw them listed online and we like drove for two hours to get them. And we saw that there was actually two of them. We were only going to go get one just because of how rare they were. We we're like, oh, we only need one. And then we're like, this chance only comes around once in a blue moon. So we just decided to bite the bullet and get two. And then coincidentally, everything shut down and they weren't available for like, I don't know, forever after Start. that. Still aren't. Still really aren't <laughs> yeah. 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 And then, um, yeah, we bought them thinking that they were two males so that we would never get any babies. But, like, you know, had high hopes that maybe one day we'd get a female and eventually breed them. And then just one day we <laughs> just heard them calling and then all of a sudden they were humping. <laughs> <laughs> and um, nah, they laid eggs one day. My boyfriend was taking a video. He's like, Savannah, you're not going to believe this. And he sent it to me where I was. And he's like, they just laid eggs. The fringes laid eggs. And I was like, there's no chance. Like, you're lying. Those aren't theirs. Like, there's something going on. Two males can't make babies. So maybe it's just like they made like a <laughs> fake clutch. I don't know. I was yeah. really just like coming up with reasons why this was not true. And then they like hatched into tadpoles and then I was like okay and then I was thinking like one of the people that I met he suggested they could have potentially changed sex too like have you ever heard about them changing sex because some frogs do that and I was like no but then I did some research and like that actually is a thing and yeah it's like whoa but yeah and then we then we didn't turn off like so we had this them in this tank and then every month for about five months they were laying a clutch of between like 13 and 20 eggs, and it was pretty intense. We had a lot of tadpoles and a lot of froglets that we were trying to get rid of. And um, we could not figure out what was going on because we realized that like, we just wanted this to stop. As much of a blessing as it was, it needed to end because that was too many beautiful frogs and we just did not have the capacity to take care of them. So and then I posted a Kijiji ad and no one believed me that I was selling them. So <laughs> it just seemed too good to be true. So I was like, okay, we, like, what do we, we, I did some research, I figured it out. We realized that because we had a water pump in there that was flowing water over the plants that are in the enclosure, it ended up being yeah, Stimulant. stimulating yeah. yeah, for their reproductive cycle. And then I ended up reading more about that and that, that actually, yeah, it's like a bit of a stressful situation. So immediately we turned the pump off and they didn't lay eggs and I was like well maybe it's just a coincidence maybe it's just a season or something weird so I plugged the pump in for like half a day when I was working and then it was getting annoying so I unplugged it and then like clockwork at the end of the day at night when I looked in the water they were making babies and they laid another clutch so the pump has not been on since so yeah 
The magic pump. The magic pump. Now you guys know how to breathe them. It's really simple, yeah. During my travels through Costa Rica a few months ago, I had the pleasure of seeing a Cruziohyla sylviae, which is the Sylvia's tree frog, a member of the same genus. What is clear is that these animals spend their entire life up in the tree canopies, descending only to small shallow pools of water full of leaves and tannins to deposit their eggs nearby so that when the tadpoles have developed, they can drop into those bodies of water. This is important information when it comes to reproducing these animals. Savannah explained that the tadpoles were successfully raised in containers full of spring water and water from the adult enclosure. This is a very important step for them as it inoculates the environment with the frog's natural microbiome. Tadpoles are fed an assortment of fish foods three times a week, keeping in mind that as they grow, they also consume more food. A turkey baster is used to routinely clean the water of uneaten food and partial water changes are made once per week. A sponge filter or air stone oxygenating the water can also be used on a 12 hour per day cycle if desired. Once the froglets have developed their limbs and began to absorb their tails, they are moved into a rearing enclosure which is essentially a small version of the adult enclosure minus the body of water at the bottom. Instead, the animals are misted twice a day every 12 hours for 60 seconds. What's really exciting is we're actually here, as we discussed at the start of the video, to pick up some tadpoles and frogs. And Savannah was generous enough to share with us the experience and story of how they were able to successfully produce these animals. So it's a really rare treat. We're very thankful that we can share on each other's channels. The process is very simple and it works. And that's the, the key thing here. There isn't just one way to do things right. In fact, sterile isn't always the best way. And this is sort of a, a, a back and forth controversial issue that we see in the hobby, a discussion, I could say. And it's just very interesting to be able to document Savannah and Adam's experience with these animals. So we're very thankful to be able to share it with you all. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all what you think is the most cool, interesting, or beautiful species of specialty pet being produced now. Having the opportunity to visit Savannah and Adam really made me see the profound impact that we can have as hobbyists in producing such interesting animals in captivity. And I'd love to know what you think are some of the greatest success stories or just your favorite species that are in captivity at large. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. I'm also thrilled to share with you all that I picked up four tadpoles myself that I'm really looking forward to raising and keeping as adults. Several of them were given to me with back legs already developed and at the time of this recording are emerging from the water as fully developed froglets. I can't wait to do an update video where I'll introduce you all to them in their grow out enclosure I'll be setting up shortly. It's gonna be really fun. Well everybody, there you have it. I want to take a moment to sincerely thank Savannah for welcoming us into her home to do the tour and for sharing the story of how it is that she and her partner Adam are producing these incredible animals. I also can't wait to introduce you all to my new male black breasted leaf turtle. That'll be in an upcoming video so stay tuned for that. With that all being said, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's video and I can't wait to see you all in another video again soon. Take care everybody.